Could you grow an MSP business from the seed of an idea to a $40 million company? How long do you think it would take? And what would you have to do to get there? If you think that kind of growth is beyond you, think again. I spoke to an MSP owner that did it. And in this video, we're going to examine how he did it and how you can do the same with your MSP business. Hi, my name is Tom Andrulis. I'm the CEO of Intelligent Technical Solutions. I grew my MSP from a one band band in 2003 to a $40 million plus 300 plus employee MSP in, in 20 years. Tom's story is fascinating. And as you'll see, his 20 year journey covers a lot of ground. You're gonna hear about the decisions Tom made, the opportunities he seized and the luck he created on the way to growing his successful MSP business. Tom's MSP growth journey began in the early 2000s when his employer closed down the Las Vegas office where he worked. Then I had to make a decision and they said, you can go to LA, you got a job there, or you can take a severance package. And I thought, all right, this is, this is the moment I got to figure out what I'm going to do. I know I don't want to go to LA. And, you know, I said, all right, give me the severance package. Let's, let's see what happens. I think deep down, I always wanted to have my own business and it was just a matter of trying to figure it out. So sat in his Las Vegas home, Tom knew he needed to find work. Through a couple of friends of mine, I got basically introduced to IT consulting. And so I went through and consulted with a few different businesses, realized that I loved helping people. I loved fixing technology. I just loved everything about it. So in 2003, I started Intelligent Technical Solutions. Tom had experienced what's been described as an entrepreneurial seizure. Once you decide that you want to start your own business, it's very hard to shake that feeling. It's probably what started you on your own MSP journey. You know, as a one man band, basically back then in 2003, had to figure out everything. I think technically I felt like I knew what I was doing, but I didn't know how to do accounting. I didn't know how to do HR, marketing, sales, any of that and actually much less, you know, manage people either. So it's been an adventure and I, I went through and figured out, you know, through trial and error and a lot of a lot of books that I've read, better ways to do things, you know, continually improving the process along the way. So far, so familiar, right? Most people, when they start something new, whether that's a business or just a hobby, don't know what they don't know. But that's no reason not to do things. Like Tom, you just learn as you go. You make mistakes, you iterate, you improve. And something that Tom knew was that even as a one-man band, he didn't have to work in isolation. He joined a local peer group network where he was able to learn and share ideas with other people doing the same thing as him. It can be lonely working on your own, which is why it's so important to create that support network around yourself, both for your professional and mental well-being. If you're an MSP owner, you can join a huge MSP marketing networking group on Facebook. You'll find a link in the description. A local peer group is where Tom found his next opportunity. I had a friend of mine in one of our peer groups ask me, you know, if we could partner up somehow, because he really wanted to focus on client account management. And he said, hey, maybe you guys can run operations and, you know, accounting and all that stuff on the back end. So we figured out a way to partner up and that was the catalyst of really what is skyrocketed ITS. Forming and maintaining relationships in peer groups or networks like Tom did can really pay off. Sometimes it's just about being in the right place, talking to the right person at the right time. People like Tom know that there are ways to make sure that you can put yourself in the right place, in front of the right person at the right time, ready to take full advantage of any opportunities that present themselves. Soon, Tom's business was doing well, too well for Tom to manage on his own. I think I got to a point where, you know, my schedule was filling up. I had some additional requests and I said, okay, I need to bring another person on. So I had a friend of mine, I think he was doing some IT consulting on the side as well. I said, hey, you know, maybe we could like partner up somehow. I could just pay you to go do some of these jobs and we could work together in that way. And then that got to be, you know, we got more and more clients and more business to the point where I said, okay, why don't we just hire you on and then we can just work under uh, ITS. Tom was happy with his steady growth, but then one day the work he'd done to establish himself as a trusted MSP in the area paid off big time when a former colleague approached him with a proposition. One of the guys that worked at EA got a job at a big architectural firm out here in Las Vegas. And when he got the job, he was there for two months and he's like, this place is such a disaster we got to fix it. You know, he reached out to me to help him out. 
And so that became one of our biggest clients. It was definitely our biggest client back then, you know, still one of our larger clients now, 20 years later. But that, that one year of just building, having, you know, maybe a part-time person here, a part-time admin to help with invoicing, answering the phone, that kind of thing, turned into probably two or three people after the first year. It's a bit of a culture shock. I mean, if you're not used to managing people, like how do you manage somebody? And I've learned a lot of things along the way. The more work started to flow Tom's way, the more he was forced out of his comfort zone. But as uncomfortable as that might feel, it's important when managing and actively growing your business that you do step out of your comfort zone sometimes. MSP owners that don't look beyond their immediate horizons will never push on. They may even struggle just to stand still. But Tom didn't stand still. Soon, his MSP's next partnership opportunity presented itself. The second partnership that we did was an MSP that the first partner knew in Orange County. He loved technology. He had about three people in his company. One of the people had a severe illness, had to quit. The other one, I think they were on a visa or something that ended, they had to leave the country. So this three person company was condensed down into a one person company. And that guy, while he loved technology, you know, he didn't want to work 20 hours a day, you know, trying to like make up for the other, the other two people. He's like, I don't really need to work this hard. I just want to, you know, keep kind of stay in the game a little bit. Um, and, and that was his catalyst to wanting to join us is say, hey, you guys do all the stuff that I don't have time for and I'll just keep working with the clients that I really love. The best deals are ones where both parties benefit. Forging mutually beneficial partnerships with other business owners allowed Tom's MSP to grow organically until ITS was the public face of eight MSP businesses. But this was only part of the story of how Tom built a $40 million MSP. There's one thing that all MSPs need when they're trying to grow that your business simply wouldn't survive without, however much you might wish otherwise. Clients. So how did Tom approach this aspect of growth? And what can you learn from his approach that you could apply to your own $40 million growth journey? Don't worry, we'll get to that soon, I promise. But back to those eight MSPs now working together under the ITS banner. How could Tom integrate eight MSP businesses with eight different owners, eight different technology stacks, eight different company cultures into a single cohesive entity? So when people looked at our company, they're like, oh, well, hey, I'm doing everything myself. You guys have a team of people that can help out. So they just naturally just came into the company and just assumed you know, most of the tools and processes that we had. There is a huge integration process. Like, you know, our integration process is nine to 12 months and it goes through hundreds and hundreds of tasks. And there's still a lot of moving parts, but the biggest thing was actually getting the integration going and getting on the same platform so the team could be uh, working together. Having everyone use the same systems is one thing, but how can you make staff from eight previously separate entities feel like they're part of a single team? We wanted to have one team you know, which gave us one culture and one group of people to rely on. And so we decided early on, like, let's integrate everything. Let's let's have one brand name. Let's have one platform of ticketing and RMM and all these things. Like, let's let's have it all on the same, the same table. I think from a culture standpoint, that's the best. I mean, obviously that's the road that we chose to go down. We tend to keep the culture up by, by leaning on our core values. So we talk about our core values all the time, every single day in our daily huddle, we talk about core values. Company culture is like an office plant. It doesn't arrive in the business on its own, and if you don't tend it properly, it will wither or grow in unexpected directions, or unwanted little weeds will spring up in the pot and suck up all the nutrients your plant needs. As an MSP owner, it's your responsibility to maintain and nurture the culture you want within your business and help it grow in the direction you want. Speaking of growth, business growth through partnership deals will only take an MSP so far. Ultimately, your income comes from your client base. Up till now, Tom had largely relied on his personal network to develop prospects and land new clients. But would that approach continue to serve ITS as the company grew in scale and stature? The first decade, some of the leads groups initially were, were decent, it was something. You know, like we don't do the same leads groups that I did back then now, but when I was starting out, every dollar mattered so much that anything, you know, was, was good. 
Then I got to the point where I had some extra money and I was able to uh, do some direct mail campaigns or uh, you know advertise in the phone book back then. That was the thing, right? Of course, you got the little website that didn't really produce much, but it was a lot of just who do I know, who knows me. I did actually get a few calls out of the phone book, and then some of the direct mail worked, you know, quite well back then. It was it was pretty effective as far as like getting some decent leads in. Of course, you know, 99% of it probably was just thrown in the trash, but that 1% that responded was valuable. As Tom discovered, and as you've probably experienced yourself on your own MSP growth journey, you have to constantly adapt your approaches and the way you do things if you want to get ahead. Marketing will help, but it's important to remember that your marketing should be more of a marathon than a sprint. Sending a single email to your leads database won't be nearly as effective as building a strategic marketing system. The MSP Marketing Edge will help you build a marketing system that will help you grow your business. Find out more in the description. Now, as well as merging his MSP and others together, Tom used another means to bring additional businesses into the ITS fold, acquisitions. As Tom will explain, it's not always a simple case of steamrollering in, slamming down a bundle of cash on the table and buying a business outright. It turns out that business acquisitions can get very complicated indeed. I'll start with uh, the easier, more simplistic to the more complex. So the most simple way was to just say, hey, listen, I'm gonna, let's create a promissory note and I'm gonna buy your business for X amount of dollars and I'll pay you over a certain amount of time or I'll pay you a certain percentage of the revenue that's coming in. Next step up that's you know, a little bit easier to understand would be just straight merger. Hey, your company's worth X amount of dollars, ours is worth another you know, Y amount of dollars, we put them together. You know, now we have Z amount of dollars, let's say, and that's just some way to come together without, without actually spending money. The third way, which is more complex, was a very unique partnership structure where we had our corporation and they had their corporation, but we, we formed another third corporation together. That way worked pretty well. Like it, people go, I get it. I, I, I like it and you know, I wanna join based on that. Our goal was to put a bunch of companies together to become more valuable so that you know, that million dollars is worth you know, 1.5, 2 million, 3 million and so forth. So again, aligning with that philosophy that deals should be of mutual benefit to all parties, Tom used a variety of deal structures to secure the all-important buy-in from the owners and managers of the companies he wanted to acquire to grow his MSP. As Tom explained, sometimes one business can acquire another without any money changing hands. But for some deals, cash is required. Lots of cash. Cash that ITS didn't have. This may be a situation you found yourself in, how did you approach it? Was private equity an option? It was for Tom, but one that needed careful consideration. We were either gonna keep doing it ourselves or try to get private equity. We had five more MSPs that we were looking to merge in and partner with. One of them wanted to get cash out completely. So we had to make a decision internally of like, hey, do we wanna to scrape together you know, all the funds that we had, buy that MSP, or do we bring private equity in and use their their funding to you know buy the MSP and buy the additional ones. So we ended up going down the PE route, brought private equity on in May of 2022 last year, and completed all five uh, purchases or, or partnerships with the MSPs. It's been an insane ride, honestly, over the last uh, 20 years or so. Over his 20-year, $40 million journey, Thomas found dozens of ways to add value to his growing MSP business. Beginning with word of mouth organic growth, to leveraging his peer group network, to strategic partnerships, through to mergers and acquisitions of varying flavors, Tom has proven that growing your MSP business is not a linear process or singular event. It began with the seed of an idea, which he nurtured, training it in this direction and that, always seeking the light, watching deep roots take hold and branches strutting off in all directions. Tom's story is both extraordinary and inspirational. I'd love to know what MSP owners like you think of it all. Is there anything that he did that you're gonna try in your own business? Perhaps this sounds a bit daunting and you have some questions. Well, I'm always happy to help answer any questions you have about growing your MSP. Just leave a comment below.